There is huge news coming out for the future of the Philippines. Many analysts and world institutions are now forecasting that the archipelago nation can reach one or two trillion dollars in gross domestic product in the next decade. Recently, the World Economic Forum president, Borja Brende, stated that they are bullish for the Philippine economy, and they think that they can reach over $2 trillion in GDP. If the Philippines were to reach that, it would be an economy comparable to Canada, which has $2.2 trillion today, South Korea, which has $1.7 trillion, Italy with $2.2 trillion, and so much more. The Philippines would then be able to have a status similar to these nations. However, WEF President Brende stated that it will only happen if reforms continue. Further, Brende also stated that they must also continue to invest in education, infrastructure, and help draw out the competence of the Filipino people. The removal of red tape and bureaucratic bottlenecks are necessary, as well as creating an environment where entrepreneurs and businesses would thrive. What President Brende also said may surprise most people who are pessimistic about the Philippine economy. He and the WEF are seeing how resilient the Philippine economy is, and that they are now seeing a lot of global business interest in the country to which he saw that the Philippines is now amongst the fastest growing economies in the region. Finally, President Brende stated that there are huge opportunities in the renewable energy sector. By assessing this opportunity, the Philippines may reduce their need to import from other countries. This is essential because the Philippines are paying billions of billions of dollars from energy imports every single year. What the Philippines did to make this happen is to open up foreign ownership in renewable energy which led to huge amounts of foreign investments and interest in the sector. Just take a look at some of the recent investments made, they are huge. Just a week ago, we saw an announcement made by the Ayala's ACEN subsidiary and Bright Knight Power, a US based company, to build a 1.2 billion US dollar renewable project. That is no small number. Then we also saw announcements from Australian firms who are keen to invest in the Philippine renewable energy industry. Germany recently announced about 56 billion pesos in the wind and solar projects. These are just some of the many more out there and if the Philippines successfully tap them, they will indeed become an energy powerhouse. But then again, was it really because of the government's policy in opening up foreign ownership? Well, there's that, but it's also because the Philippines' renewable energy field is very attractive. They have abundant natural resources that are suitable for renewable energy development. The Philippines, being an archipelagic country with a tropical climate, has a great potential for solar energy. The country receives an ample amount of sunlight throughout the year making it an ideal location for solar farms and solar panels on rooftops. Additionally, the geographical landscape of the Philippines, which is numerous islands and highlands, provides excellent opportunities for wind energy generation. There are several areas with consistent and strong winds, especially in the northern part of the country which are ideal for wind turbines. But the most promising, not only by Brende, but to many people is the young population of the Philippines. According to a data set by the United Nations, the median age of the Philippines sits at just 24 and a half years old. Compare that to Vietnam which is 32 years old, Indonesia at 29 and a half years old, or even China at 37.9 years old. Having a low median age just suggests a dynamic labor force which has the capacity to adapt to new technologies and trends. In the fast evolving global economy, agility and the ability to quickly learn new skills are crucial. The Philippines, with its young workforce, is well positioned to take on challenges of the digital age. Additionally, a young population is indicative of potential for sustained economic growth. Economists often discuss the demographic dividend, which occurs when a country has a larger proportion of working age individuals relative to dependents. This can result in increased productivity and, if managed properly, can spur economic growth. For the Philippines, this demographic dividend presents a window of opportunity to harness its young population's productivity for national development. Now, let's not just take a look at the World Economic Forum, because they are not alone. Another report by SP Global said that the Philippines is on track to become a $1 trillion economy by 2033. They stated that the Philippines continues to post extraordinary growth. The country's GDP per capita can even reach $6,000 by 2030. This is supported by strong private consumption, government infrastructure spending, and improving remittance inflows. The IT-BPO sector is poised for sustained growth, backed by a skilled workforce and English proficiency. But anyway, do let us know what you think down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.